time again, exposing the truth. Welcome to Coffee Time Again, exposing the truth. Dale at the microphone, the show that demonstrates how history repeats itself. He digs into the past, shows what happens and how it is happening now. Follow the path of history to where it goes, then relate it to today to reveal the connections. The culture that forgets its history has no future. A history buff and loves to talk about it, going back as far as ancient Greeks and Egyptians and beyond. So grab your coffee, your chair, and listen to the show. Hope you enjoy. Good morning. My name is Dale. I'm the host of the show, Coffee Time Again, Exposing the Truth. And today we're exposing the truth on the border. We're talking with JJ, and he is going to Correll, and he is going to tell us the story of what happened, what's going on, and his experience with two decades with the Border Patrol, rising, as I understand it, to supervisor in the Tijuana, uh, San Diego area, mainly San Diego, I would assume. And anyway, let me enter the, the culture that forgets its history has no future. So let's get on with the history of the Border Patrol and what's going on right now. Welcome to the show, JJ. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to come and have this great format, the podcast format, to discuss and, and discuss in detail what I believe is the greatest threat facing our, our beautiful republic, and that is the unfettered uh, numerous millions of illegal aliens born into our nation. Yes. Millions is, is a correct statement, too, as I understand it, from what I understand about because they do a lot of broadcasting from Texas, but they don't do a lot from California, and that's what I'm interested in, too. I have good. I'm rem- yeah, I, I would love to get into anything you want to talk about today. Um, all of my, uh, I'm just recently retired for two years and I have uh, numerous sources throughout DHS and the Border Patrol that I get daily updates. Uh, so everything that we could talk about today is, is currently happening. Okay. What I'd like to know is what's your history? How did you get involved in the Border Patrol? What brought you in? Are you military, ex-military and then came into the Border Patrol or... Just went into border patrol for major uh, Taiwan security. Um, so my father was a Secret Service agent. He was very successful. Uh, he was a special agent in charge, um, high-ranking official. Uh, mm-hmm. Numerous uh, presidential details from LBJ all the way up to Clinton and Pope John Paul II. I'm Catholic, so that was a huge deal for my father uh, to be guarding the Pope, which was insane when when the Pope uh, now Saint. Uh, came to New Orleans uh, and spoke in in America for the first time in decades. Um, My father, like I said, was Secret Service uh, at the time in the late 90s. There was a governmental shutdown. The only agency that was hiring was United States Border Patrol. I played college football and I wanted to be like my father, as many uh, young men want to be. I knew I didn't want to be in a Secret Service and, and I wanted to follow a different path, but I knew that being in law enforcement would um, bring back that camaraderie and teamwork. And I was not uh, mistaken by that. I joined the Border Patrol in 1997. Um, my first duty station was Imperial Beach, which is the southwesternmost point of the United States and six miles uh, to the Santa Cedar Port of Entry. Um, it was the Tijuana border. It was during, I was spent a decade there during the most violent times in recent Border Patrol history. I received rank of supervisor there, and I ran my own ATV unit, which I still can't believe I got paid uh, to ride around ATVs and chase uh, human smugglers and narcotic smugglers and get paid yes. for it. Um, I took a, a lateral promotion up to the coastline in San Clemente, California, just, just south of Los Angeles, and I created and ran a 50-man unit that took down uh, drug cartel shipments of, of narcotics uh, pouring across our border and landing on our coastlines all the way up to San Francisco. Very successful unit. Uh, one of my agents actually testified against El Chapo Guzman and secured a, the conviction. Uh, right. The vast majority of all narcotics my unit arrested uh, was Sinaloa cartel. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm very proud of that, of what I created. I took a lateral, I mean, excuse me, I took a promotion to an inland station north in Temecula, California, uh, where I finished my career after 24 years and my last title was deputy patrol agent in charge. So Dale, why I believe that I am an expert on immigration because of my career uh, has allowed me to have a very unique perspective 
being a frontline agent down in the weeds fighting in, in this war. And it is a war on the border. And then as a senior leader taking, say, like the 20,000 foot view down to uh, how how strategic law enforcement postures are developed, the the deployment of manpower and resources and budgets and policies, stuff that really is quite boring, to be honest with you. I'd rather be down on the border, but that gives me a very unique perspective um, on on Border Patrol. And I just, I'm first time author and had my book published called Invaded, The Intentional Destruction of the American Immigration System. Good. And that is now uh, number one on Amazon in multiple uh, areas uh, regarding immigration, border, government, treason, et cetera. So um, that's a little bit about myself. So you got the book on Amazon now and other sources? I give, I'm going to give a link it's, to that book when I do the editing. Yeah, absolutely. You can just go to jjcarroll.com, which is my um, okay. web page, and I have a book link to that. And you can just go to amazon.com and type in Invaded by J.J. Carroll, and, yeah. and it will pop up. And I have an ebook. uh an audio book and as well as a paperback. But oh, I love the audio books. So I have to, I have trouble reading because of my sight, and my age, and yeah. dyslexic. So I prefer. Well, you'll audio. like my ebook, uh, Dale, because the 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 audio actor is the same actor that did the uh, audio book for American Sniper. Oh, okay. And Ron DeSantis last book, so he's yeah. he's doing mine. I'm very excited about him reading my book so good i'm um, glad to hear that yeah yeah so i just wrote it down so i make sure i get it into the editing when i, I what i do is there'll be a, a little boy right at the top of your head this is his book get okay it. thank you you betcha i'll get you an, uh anyway so that's how you got started in the Border Patrol. It's an interesting story you have there. I was going to ask, a question came into my mind. You mainly worked with drugs, as I understand, from what I heard you say. Uh, no, the beginning of my career was all uh, the border, where yeah. it was just, where in my area was very urban in yeah. uh, Imperial Beach. Um, so I, I, it was all human smuggling, Israeli narcotics. Yeah. Once I got into the coastline, and then uh, obviously up in northern uh, the last station I was at, um, it was majority narcotics, hard narcotics, yeah. and uh, human smuggling trafficking. Yeah, so you were doing trafficking as well, children and adults trafficking, slave trade and sex trade and all that. You got involved in a little bit of that, I assume? Yeah, everything that you're seeing on the border, yeah. everyone that comes across has to pay a fee. And mm -hmm. sometimes you do not have the ability to pay that fee. So you're going to work it off in sweatshops or you're going to sell your body mm -hmm. and you're going to pay that off. That's one of my big, big things. I'm a drug and alcohol. I'm a recovered alcoholic, 34 years, and I spent uh, 24 years as a drug and alcohol counselor. And a lot of my had were immigrants, mm -hmm. and that just who were smuggled in. And I fought like hell for them, but I wasn't always successful because I didn't have right. any it's... skills training. Yes. Well, congratulations on being sober. I know that that. To shake off those demons took a lot of uh, yeah. sacrifice and 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 hurt, um, and that is one of my. So when you look at illegal immigration, I, the way that I try to explain it is think of a, a, a octopus like a, a mutant octopus with a mm -hmm. hundred tentacles, and those tentacles are now reaching in every crevice of America, mm -hmm. and is touching it be child sex trafficking. Yes. Female sex trafficking, um, drugs, terrorism, crime, uh, destruction of societal social services. Everything you can imagine in America is being adversely affected by millions. And, and, and you and I can go over how I come to the term millions, because it is tens of millions of illegal aliens in our country right now. Um, and it is shocking, shocking when you start to understand or be told the, the true numbers, not not the made up numbers the media likes to tell or spin yeah. or actually CVP. Our own government yeah. is untrustworthy. And I say that with no glee. I, look, we know the FBI is compromised, CIA, and I'm telling you the DHS and the yeah. CVP is, is utterly compromised as well. Their numbers do not make sense. They, they report 
erroneously uh, because liars, one thing liars can't do is they can't control or remember all the lies that they tell. And they always step on themselves. And the same thing is true with the CBP. Yes. And uh, I understand that all the government agencies are corrupt. I'm very much against. What I'd like to see is get rid of a few government agencies. Yes. The department heads, like about 15 huh? of them. In my opinion, I've done a podcast on them. I've done podcasts on a lot of things. But I've got 40 some odd up here. The last four years. This is my fourth year. Okay. So I've been doing That's this great. a day or two. Good. So, what I want to know, next question that I've got for you is, what created this situation? How did it get started? I hate the word what or why, but what started this? Was it Reagan when he closed the border, when he uh, offered amnesty to everybody? Is that what started it? Well, once you start, when you look back, like I write in my book, Invaded, I, I give a detailed description of when, what was the genesis of this? And people need to understand prior to 1924, we had mass legal. Remember, we have to make this determination, this distinction between legal and illegal immigration. Right. So I'm 100% for legal immigration. I think I think naturalized citizens, some, some of those individuals are the best Americans that we have because mm -hmm. they truly come from places where they had no freedom. And now they come here and they cherish what America is. Sometimes when you are just given citizenship by birth and I lived here, you take for granted the ability to talk about your government or your ability to retain your private property from intellectual property as, as well as manual labor and, and work. Mm -hmm. What what we're experiencing in America, the beauty of our freedom is no one else has these freedoms. In, across the world, across the globe. That's why they want to come here. So mm -hmm. I am for all for legal immigration. Now, when you look back to 1924, it was the night, the it was the Immigration Act of 1924, which created the United States Border Patrol. But the the politicians slammed the door shut and put restrictions on legal immigration mm -hmm. because they saw the influx and balkanization of people from around the globe that stayed in their communities and did not assimilate, did not learn the language. And our politicians back then understood, and our leaders understood, America is great, not because of its diversity and the, the plethora of languages. Our country is great because we are a collection of people that are American.